Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnit. This, of course, is the talk show and podcast where we have digital discussions, worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, music, everything really, depending on the guests we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On social media, you know me as Pity Beats. You'll recognize my guest from a lot of really cool TV shows and movies over the years. But most recently, you'll recognize him from Panic, which was dropped on Amazon Prime. David W. Thompson is with us. David, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Hey, Petey. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm excited to uh, chat with you. I mean, Panic finally dropped. And it's interesting because a lot of you, especially the leads, were casted for this a long time ago. Like, has it, has it hit you that it's finally out? <laughs> It's crazy, man. We, I mean, we did the pilot three years ago. And at that point, I mean, you know, I was definitely uh, closer to high school age than I am these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it was, um, it's very uh, wild to watch it all kind of finally come to come to fruition. Absolutely. Um, and you know what? I have to say, I don't want to go into big spoilers about everything because we want people to watch Panic. And I have to tell you, I honestly think it's worth, like, if you go in fresh, it's it's uh -huh. a good time. You know what I mean? Like, if you know, you know about like, the challenges and everything. But that must have been a fun character to play. Like, that must have been. Absolutely. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's very thrilling. Um, and I and I am kind of honored and excited that I get to uh, walk, pe you know, lead people through these kind of um, death-defying uh, <laughs> challenges and uh, all sorts of kind of mayhem that people are getting involved in. I need to know because everyone's obviously talking about the tiger, right? The tiger was in the trailer and everyone's yeah, talking about, like, yeah, we've got to talk about the tiger. Um, <laughs> the tiger did, was you, did, you, did you know about the tiger? Like it was in the script, right? Like was it brought up right away when you guys were working on it? It was not. Okay. It was, um, <laughs> that was a bit of a, of a surprise. I remember reading like, you know, I think it gets introduced in, like episode six or something. I was like, oh, whoa, a tiger. And there were kind of whispers in the beginning that maybe there would be a real tiger on set. And we yeah. all got a little jittery uh, for a while. And then uh, uh, those rumors uh, proved to be false, but um, very very exciting to have the tiger around. but it's interesting too because i saw it because i you know I, I i interviewed olivia and jessica and cameron so i got to see panic before like trailers came on and everything and i find it funny because i went into it like really fresh that's why i feel like i really wow. enjoyed it right because i i went in not really expecting i knew about the book but other than that but like the tiger was obviously like my a big takeaway, you know what I mean? And then they put it in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. I was like, okay, I guess we're leading with the tiger. All right, you know, I mean, play all your cards. Sure, I get it. <laughs> For you specifically with storytelling and acting, did that kind of, did that like interest peak at a young age for you? Like, did you know you want to do this stuff at a young age, David, like acting? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I knew I liked to, uh, you know, kind of perform and entertain from a young age. I remember, um, you know, I would like, uh, after we saw Lord of the Rings, I would crawl around like Gollum for my family and they were really kind of disturbed by it, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was in high school, I took like stand up classes and that didn't stick because um, I don't have the skin for it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah, I started kind of doing it in sort of middle school, high school and and uh, and I just kind of really loved it. And Your and character in Panic has that like stand-up comedy shtick to him a little bit. A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, I think that, that probably that probably helped um, in in you know in doing dealing with the crowd. This is what you do. This is your this is this is your job. Like you play, you, you're an actor, a storyteller, right? And you know you go where the opportunities are, where the work is. But looking back on it, you've you've been able to work on some pretty cool projects. I've been very lucky to do so. Yeah, yeah it's been, uh, it's been very cool. It, but like a, like a variety of different things, like not just kind of like one pot of one genre. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the first like professional thing I ever did was this movie called Win Win that I booked when I was in high school yeah. and with Paul Giamatti. Was, yeah, yeah. This little kind of indie dramedy with, I mean, you know, the most incredible cast and the 
amazing director Tom McCarthy that would you know win an Oscar a couple of years later. You want to hear something crazy about this? That Please. technically was the first movie I ever watched on Netflix. Wow. Because I got it, we got it a bit late. We're in Canada, and I guess it's, it was this was like this was like before this was like back in the day. Like House of Cards <laughs> and Orange is New Black were just coming out, you know what I mean? Uh, and that uh, was like the first movie I watched on Netflix was Win Win. <laughs> historical. That's um I'm I'm honored. I'm honored that that was That's it. a great movie. Love that movie. I, I think so too, yeah. And I and I've had an, you know, and and so and since then I've had an opportunity to do some kind of really um wackier stuff, you know, in kind of the range Very of um, sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I got to do two movies with Jeremy Sonnier, who's really kind of tremendous. And um, yeah, after that, the blood just started flowing and it never really. Your character in the cool. green room is like, if you think about it, you are like the guy who leads them to that whole situation. I get them all murdered. I get them all killed. You I, I take game. full responsibility for killing, you know, an up and coming pop uh, punk band. That, <laughs> it's, it's interesting too, because I'm sure you have friends that are in TV shows and movies that they'll say that, like they don't maybe have like the biggest role, but then if they look at the script, it's like a pivotal role in terms of what leads to everything else. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was watching this interview with um, Tim Blake Nelson recently, you know, and he and I, which who I adore, and he was talking about he's like a lot of people want to be the guy, yeah, and I'm content being you know the guy who who helps the guy get to where you know it needs to go, and I think that that is um, something that I, I I take a lot of pleasure in. As and well. I think Green Room's not like I mean it. Some people are calling it a horror movie. There's a lot going on in it, but. That's a genre. Or politically, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, no, but there, I guess, yeah, you could say it's a horror movie. I guess you yeah. could say Green Room is a horror There's movie. Yeah. Well, you have, like, you have uh, one of the Fear Streets on Netflix coming out um, this summer as well. Um, the horror movie genre is here to stay. Isn't it crazy? Like, whether you're a fan of it or not, like, it's nuts. I love it. I, um, when I was a kid, I was very afraid of horror movies. I, I liked things that were spooky, but not scary, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I've since kind of expanded my um, uh, horizon there. But um, oh, uh, even just a couple months ago, um, Olivia of, of Panic uh, showed me Scream for the first time. And I had, a, I had a blast watching. I'm doing a lot of catch up now that I can kind of handle these movies. I think the scary, it's, it's funny because people always ask me, like, what's your favorite horror movie? And I find that hard to answer, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of good ones. But I find the easy question to, ask, to answer is what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Because there's a difference, right? Right? Uh -huh. Like there, there's a difference. Uh -huh. And the scariest movie I've ever seen by a mile, like by a mile, is The Strangers with with Liv Tyler and I've never uh, seen Scott it. Spielberg. It's it's home invasion, terrifying. I'm, ter I'm terrified of just the idea of all the, you know, like anytime I'm in a house with a lot of large windows at night, I, um, By I'm not. By a landslide, that is, in my opinion, the scariest movie I've ever seen. It doesn't even like, come close. That's what I find like okay. is, yeah. So oh, I don't wow. think you're going to okay. see it. <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll see it. Maybe I, um, you know, totally won't. Maybe I'll just <laughs> actively skip it. You know, geek culture, comic book culture is another amazing kind of, um, area right now an atmosphere where there's so much amazing stuff coming out of it you had a chance to be in a few episodes of the boys have you noticed it is cool to be it's cool to be a nerd it's cool to be a geek like i it was never like that before <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a new thing and i'm happy to embrace it i um i have a D, D group uh you know with a bunch of high school friends and um and I feel, it feels like something that, I mean, I feel like even just as I've like come of age, it is way more accepted. Like that is something you might kind of have to whisper like a decade or two ago. And now, I mean, you know, as of, I mean, stranger things, they, they play D and D, you know, and it makes it very exciting, but I feel like now, like, um, I'm not <laughs> afraid to, uh, mention it on like a first or second date, you know, <laughs> that I, um, and sometimes, you know, that crashes and burns, but, uh, but, but it's, it's no longer something I feel like I need to be ashamed. It's of. not like something you have to hide anymore. Right. It's not the <laughs> smell from my closet. 
you know. <laughs> it's but it's so interesting too because I saw like an, an interview that the cast of Cobra Kai did. They're talking about who's the nerdiest of the group, and then like one of them was like Sholo because he plays D and D, and he was like, "Yeah, well, D and D is in Stranger Things, and that's one of the biggest shows on the planet." And then they're like, "Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's not nerdy." <laughs> <laughs> they're nerds in the show you know that's not you're not defending yourself yeah no i uh okay so i i think it's just you know i i'm willing to embrace my nerdiness that's what it is so people are going to be able to check you out in panic which is on amazon prime right now all 10 episodes they could stream it um and it's a fun it's fun and I, it doesn't stop like it's like it's you know there's shows that are like a slow burn and then like there's kind uh, of like some uh, this one just like it moves it moves yeah, yeah. So they really hope- keep they really keep the pace up. They keep the tension. It's great. What are you hoping they get out of it specifically when they watch Panic, David? Um, I hope. I hope they're entertained. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like it's a really crazy time, and uh, I know a lot of people have just been kind of you know with quarantine, just kind of isolated and needing an escape, needing a distraction. And, you know, bottom line, I just hope people can watch this show and it kind of distracts them from all the um, crazy things going on in their lives. Right? Absolutely. You know, like and you're an actor. We see you in a lot of these films and, uh, and TV shows. But, you know, a lot of people in the entertainment industry sometimes kind of experiment or have ambitions to maybe go behind the camera and, you know, write, direct and produce. Maybe you're going to maybe focus on acting. That's kind of the main thing. But have you kind of thought about maybe like getting like getting serious into like script writing or directing or producing down the road or do you want to kind of focus on acting um a little bit i feel like you know um acting the main thing but but uh, a, a buddy of mine um austin caldwell we uh wrote and acted and produced and he directed this uh mini you know like a web series yeah. uh, called ryan brook it's on vimeo and uh, we, you know, we've also been writing some, we wrote a movie and kind of shelved that for a bit. And right now we're kind of going through an outline of something else. So um, I don't even have any kind of, um, I'm not banking a lot on it, but it's just kind of something fun to do. And it's a fun, you know, kind of creative outlet. It's interesting too, because talk to a lot of your cast members from panic it sounds now we're going back because you guys shot the pilot like you said three years ago and like this it's finally out but and i think sometimes people don't realize that like how long ago sometimes especially with covid like (laughs) it's been since you so do you find it kind of hard sometimes to do interviews for things like three four years later because they might someone might do their research right and ask you something and you're like oh man like I might not remember yeah, that you, day. You probably done more research than I have. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like uh, depends a on lot the project, of the, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the information hasn't changed. You know, it's it's um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't change too much. But I hear there was a lot of night shoots for Panic, and I feel like there was a lot of like hangouts and like sitting and waiting and a lot of night shoots, and I feel like. There's a lot of people in panic, right? Like at the challenges, you're all like, there's a lot of uh-huh. like, it's an ensemble. There were. Yeah, there were. <laughs> so I feel and like- then and then COVID hit, and they were like, okay, so there's ten people standing right here. We're gonna multiply them. It'll be three hundred, but pretend pretend is three hundred, you know. But then focus it at the ten. People. But like when you weren't on set, were there any like creative juices flowing? Are you talking to people like, oh man, like I want to do this, I want to do that? Like I'm sure there was like that with some cast members and stuff because you guys have. You're on these night shoots and like, yeah, it's gotta happen. Yeah, it was a, yeah, a, a very just, um, you know, creative, lively, talented, amazing bunch of people. Um, and, you know, obvi- and as, as the nights got later and the coffee was just flowing and flowing and, you <laughs> know, and, and I'm drinking five cups and it's like four in the morning and, you know, we're just spitballing ideas. And it, it so you know, where I'm, you know where I'm coming from with like the late night and creative juices. Cause I was just thinking oh, yeah. caffeine, right? <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, I feel like a lot of like the writing that I've done, like around like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it's like that's like the golden hour of just kind of crazy ideas, you know? And then after that, it's like, okay, that's nonsense. You know, we got to scrap everything. But uh, you, you hit you hit a good a good uh, golden area. Yeah, absolutely. David, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, PD. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Panic, yeah, available now on Amazon Prime. Um, yeah. and all 10 episodes, they can watch it fun. It's a very fun binge. Um, and the pace, like you said, is amazing. And, uh, where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? 
Um, I'm on Instagram at uh, D A W Thompson. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turner at youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. You can catch David W. Thompson in panic on Amazon Prime. Until next time, this is David and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.